What a wonderful thing. We've got to get, we, we have got to get back to where we're earnestly desiring those gifts. To operate in the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. He is real. He is here for us to lead us and to guide us into all truth. And we can call upon Him and operate in the areas and the gifts and the callings that He's given us. I just feel like, you know, even on the way over here in my mind, I could see everybody knows how the Olympics start out where you got the torch and, and they light that torch and then they runners carry that torch to the place and carry it into the stadium. In my mind, it was like I'd seen this small flickering flame. And I think it's time that we start fanning that flame and get that torch going again. God is a God of fire. Elijah, said, Elijah had a showdown with the prophets of Baal and they said, we'll settle this right now once and for all. We'll call on, on their gods. I'm going to call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and you can call on your God and we'll see the one that answers by fire will be God. 
He is the God of fire. Even, even the, John the Baptist went about and was doing what he was called to do when they come to him and they said, Are you the one? And he said, I'm not the one. There's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to bend down and wipe the dust off. And he's going to baptize with Holy Ghost fire. It's time that we start fanning them flames and we invite the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the fire to come into our services and to operate in that spirit of anointing and just let God be God and let the Spirit work miracles amongst His people. And I believe, Pastor, He's doing that. I believe He wants to do that. I believe He's looking for a people that says, My God will answer by fire. Hallelujah. And I think that that's the God that we have and that's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. And I believe He's just wanting to pour that fire down upon us. And first of all, if a pastor would just go to Him and say, God, here I am. I just humble myself before You. I offer You up myself. I give You everything that I am and I just offer myself up to You. And I want You to just pour that fire down upon me and burn everything in me that's not like You out and let me be conformed to the image of your son and then when we do that I believe we can get up and we can go and we can start a fire over here and a fire over there just like the disciples of the first church. Everywhere they went they turned the cities upside down. We are still that church today. We still have the Holy Ghost power if we want it. We can still walk in power and authority and dominion and we can go and preach the word and God says that when we preach the word that he'll confirm that word with signs and wonders. What a wonderful God that we have. I believe we need to just stand to our feet this evening before we even go one step further and just ask God to come into this house, invite His Holy Spirit in here, ask Him to just have His way in this house tonight. Give yourself to Him and say, God, I'm here for you tonight. I'm here to, to offer up myself to you, to offer up praises unto you, and ask you to come in and just have your way. God, we just thank you tonight that you are a God that answers by fire and that no matter what we're going through, you can come down and you can make things right. And we just ask you to come into this place tonight. We just give you liberty and freedom to move as you would see fit to move. We just ask your spirit to go from breast to breast and show us your love and to work miracles amongst your people. God, we're here for you tonight because you gave of yourself. You freely gave and we are to freely give of ourselves, Father. And Father, I just thank you and praise you for being who you are and what you are to us, God. And I thank you that you are in this house tonight and that you're going to do mighty things amongst Amen. your people. Hallelujah. You give him a hand clap of praise. And before you're seated, just turn around to somebody and tell them you love them. Just tell them it's good to see you here in this house tonight. You know, you may be one person to the world, but you may be the world to one person. You never know what the person beside of you, in front of you, or behind you is going through. Just tell them that God is going to get you through it no matter where you're at. If you'll call upon Him, He'll move and He'll deliver you from where you're at. Hallelujah. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. I mean, you never know, Pastor, what people are going through. You know, just on the job this week, talking to people that I've known, I've been on a new job for two years and was talking with a guy, found out, you know, uh, I just asked him, Pastor, I said, how you doing? And we had some cutbacks at work, we had to lay some people off, shut some jobs down, so people's been affected by that, they've been down, they've been worried and different things, and I asked him, I said, Ted, I said, how you doing? He said, well, I'm still working, and I'm thankful for that, and I said, how are you doing? How are you and your home and your family? I mean, what about that part of your life? The pastor, he started spilling his guts to me right there, telling me what I was going on in his life, in his home, with his wife, and sickness and different things like that. And, and come to find out, you know, he's from the same area as my wife, knows some of her family and different things. And, and I told him, I said, may not mean much to you, but we're praying for you. I'll talk to my wife and we'll pray for you and your wife and your family. And, and just like I said earlier, you never know, Pastor, to the world, we're one person. But to one person, you may be the world. You can show God's love to those around you and you never know what might take place, what God might do, what somebody may be going through. And just an encouraging word, just by telling somebody, we're praying for you. You know, before I even said that, he had told me, he said, Mike, he said, I grew up in church and I 
got to get back to it. I know God's calling me back to His house and I've, I've got to get back to that place to where I know God and live for Him and do what He's called me to do. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm just amazed. I didn't even have to say a word other than how are you doing in your home life and everything else. And it's like the Spirit. The Spirit, like we've been talking about what was preached Sunday, just started moving up on Him and just started talking. So let's just remember His name's Ted. Let's just remember Him tonight. We'll go to the prayer list. We've got Anna Lawrence on the prayer list and Emily Lawrence. I look, I can't tell the first name. Bree Brown. Uh, Deep C. Tilly, recovering from heart surgery. Dora Owens. Linda Counts. Marta Mitchell. Three Unspokens. Linda Barley. Jay Gibbs with cancer and Jerry Lee. Anybody else with an urgent request tonight? How many have silent requests tonight? God sees every hand in here and He knows every need. Just come gather around this altar tonight. Let's take these cares to God. Let's cast them upon Him and believe that He cares for us and that He's going to move heaven and earth to answer those prayers tonight. just take that fire and just cleanse us. Burn out everything in us that's not like you, that's not pleasing unto you so that we may be that light in this world that you've called us to be so that we can take hope and love to a lost and dying world. God, we just thank you and praise you that you have called us out of darkness into the marvelous light of your kingdom. You have conformed us into the image of your Son and thank God we're not where we used to be and we may not be happy where we're at but God, we're asking you to help us that we can grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ tonight so that we can be that fire and be that force and be the body of Christ on this earth to go out and reach the lost. For you said in your word, God, that the fields are white and ready for harvest and we are to pray that laborers would go forth. Well, God, we are those laborers. We are your church on the earth tonight. We are your body. We are your hands and feet and we are called to go out to preach the gospel to the poor, to take the good news to the lost, God, to be able to take care of those in need, the widows and the orphans and the different things. God, you've called us to do these things, Lord. Lord, that's your heart for us and that's the heart the church should have for people. God, you said that we are to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love others, God, in the same way that you have loved us. So, God, we just invite you into this house tonight to have your way. We give you freedom and liberty, God. We ask that your spirit would just flow in this house, God. God, I believe that if we would sincerely, honestly honor you with our word and deed and offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice to you, I believe that you can shake the doorposts of the place tonight, God, just like we read of in your word. You are a mighty and awesome God and you have never changed. You are still the same to yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe you can still do the same mighty and wondrous acts, God. And God, we lift up each and every name on the prayer request to you tonight, God. God, you said to cast our cares upon you for you care for us. So we place each and every one in your hands tonight. We charge angels to go to each and every person on that list tonight to minister unto them whatever their need may be, God. We ask that you administer health and healing, salvation, God. God, financial needs, God, emotional needs, whatever it may be, we ask that you would just go and minister to each and every one, God. And God, we lift up this house to you tonight, Lord. Each and every person in this house, God, each and every family that's represented, we lift up them to you tonight, God. Ask that you would lead and guide them and bless the Lord. And God, we just lift our pastor and his wife and family up to you tonight, God. God, as you would have him do the things that he's been called to do, we are so appreciative of the word that goes forth in this house, God. God, let us take that word and hide it in our hearts and let us grow, God. God, let us be like trees that are planted by the water that we shall not be moved by what we see or what we feel.
Israel. This world is in a chaotic state right now, God, but we need to be rooted and grounded in you and in your love and in your word. And truly, we should be like those trees that are planted by the water, that we should not be moved, God, that we should have our feet upon the solid rock and be standing upon the word, Lord, and trusting in you that when the winds and the waves come, God, we shall not be moved, God, and the world will see who we are in you and they can turn their hearts into a God that can do the same for them. And God, we just thank you and praise you for all that you're doing in this house, Lord, all the miracles that we've been here, the testimonies, the healings, God, the deliverances, Lord, Lord, the people that are coming back and rededicating their life to you, God, those who are lost that are coming to the altar. God, we just thank you and praise you for that tonight. We praise you for the work of your spirit in this house, God. We thank you that your spirit is moving and that river is flowing, God. And God, we're believing that fire is just going to fall from heaven, Lord, and it's going to do great and miraculous things amongst your people, and it's going to spread, God. We're going to take that fire out into our communities, back to our homes, to our work sites, God, to our schools. We're going to show our children. We're going to take that torch, God, and God, we're going to light it and let it burn for you, and we're going to take it out into the community, Lord, so that the lost may see how wonderful that you are, God, and we just thank you and we praise you that you are a wonderful God. God, we lift up everyone in our community, God, our schools, our children, Lord, our teachers, all those that work in the public government, whatever their, their job may be, we lift them up to you, God. God, we lift up the leaders of our country, our president, Lord, and all across this nation, Lord, in each and every state, God, we lift them up to you that they would be led by you, God, that they would make decisions, Lord, that would bring blessings and peace upon the people, Lord. Lord, we need as a country to turn our heart back to you, God. God, we need something to take place, Lord. We need a moving, a mighty moving of your spirit across this nation that will cause us to turn our tents back to you, God, that we would look unto you, you who have given us this great country that we live in today, God. God, we lift up our military to you, Lord, all across the globe tonight, Lord, wherever they may be stationed, God, we just speak that you would protect them, Lord, Lord, that you would help them to do what they've been called to do, God, and God, we just thank you and praise you for that tonight, and we thank you that we can still come into a place tonight, God, that we have the freedom and the liberty to lift up holy hands unto you, to bless your name, to cry out unto your name, to still be able to speak the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings tonight, God, and we just thank you and praise you and magnify your name tonight. And God, I just thank you for every prayer that has went up tonight, God, that right now in the heavenlies and in the spirit realm, you are working on our behalf. You are perfecting those things that concern us. And God, we give you the glory for that tonight. God, no matter how dark the situation may look, we know that you are the light. And God, if we call upon you, that light will push the darkness out. And we thank you and we praise you for that tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, again, just take your way in this house
Just ain't gonna be sick When nothing is sad 
There's some things that we've got to leave behind. Maybe a broken relationship. Maybe a heartache or a hurt. Might be the job. Might be your desires, your goals, your ambitions. 
Jesus called him and he said, Come with me, I'll make you fishers of men. There's some things that we're holding on to back here. It may just be the past, Brother Gary. We've got to leave some things behind and press forward to the mark of the high calling to be what he's called us to be. Today, I was, for some reason, there was a guy on the job that was talking to me about some stuff and he was saying, Yeah, I had it made. I don't care how many years it was. I really, to be honest, wasn't listening that good. But he was talking about, in the past, the job he had. Well, I had it made. I had it made. I was single. I was at home. I was making good money. And I had it made. I said, that's in the past. Trust me, I know. I, th I, I think that way a lot of times myself. I said, you've got it made today. If, and I told him this. I don't know if he's saved. Don't, don't really know him that well. I said, you've got it made today. If you'll live for God and trust in Him and seek after Him with all your heart, you'll have it made today. You'll have it made tomorrow. You'll have it made the next day. And what's behind is not going to matter. I didn't even just, I just, that just dropped into my spirit just, just thinking about that song and didn't even, didn't even think of it. But we do. We've got to leave the past in the past and know that He's a God who holds our today and our tomorrow if we'll trust in Him. And we've got to live for Him today with all that we've got and enjoy today. Amen. My goodness, I believe that God's saying to someone in the house, leave it behind. Amen. Leave it behind and go to the well. Anything and everything that you need today, you're going to find it at the well. That river of life that flows with no end. Even Jesus looked at the woman at the well and said, if you drink of this well, you're going to thirst again tomorrow. But if you come unto me and drink of the water that I have, you're never going to thirst again. And if you do get thirsty, you're going to be thirsty for righteousness and my ways and my wills and my desire. And he said, when you're like that, I'll feel you. I'll feel you. I'll feel you. And every time you get a bit, little bit low, go back to the well and let him fill you up again and then take it and give it to somebody else. He's just that kind of God and he loves us that much. And we need to go to, we need to stay at the well. That's where we need to stay, at the well. He has everything that we need. The devil's going to lie and say, well, you've been doing that. You've been trying. You've been going to church for 20 years and you're still sick. Your son's still lost. Your wife still ain't coming home. Your job's not going to get any better. But the devil is a liar. And God's word is true. And if we'll hold on to that word, he'll move heaven and earth to make sure that what we need will come to pass. He is El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough. He will provide our every need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. He is our provider. He's our salvation, our healer. He's our helper. He's our comfort. If your heart's broken, he says that I'll mend that broken heart and I'll bind up your wounds. And just like we were talking Sunday, you know, they took up the, the, the food that was left over when they fed the 5,000, all those fragments, 12 baskets. Why would they do that? To me, it says, your life is broken. You're in a million pieces right now, but I'm going to take it all and I'm going to put you back together. I'm going to make you new. And you know, it just, uh, you've heard me say this before. You know, so many times we get broken and busted up, but we don't go to the body shop and where they put that bondo on there and cover those, those things up, to those dents and scratches and put a new fresh coat, coat of paint on it. God makes us new. He heals us and makes us complete and whole. We're a new creation in Christ, a new being with a bright future. He is a loving God tonight. Let's just give him a hand clap of praise before we go on with the service. Wonderful, wonderful God. What a wonderful time of year. What a wonderful time of year that we can celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But when we do that, we must also not forget that there's a cross. And without the cross, there's no salvation. He is a wonderful God. God had a wonderful plan of salvation. I think it was Isaiah in 9 and 6 said, His name shall be called Wonderful, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is all those things to us tonight if we we'll just let Him be. I mean, it's got a testimony in the house tonight. I know there's testimonies in here tonight. I, I know
Mr. Head, yeah. So I got up to go to the fire, and he's got a wood burner. And I opened the door, and I said, well, I'll put some wood on the fire. And I opened the door, and the fire went out. And all that was there was just cold fingers. I mean, there was just nothing there. And I said, well, I'm going to have to build a fire. So I had to search and try to find some matches or something to build a fire with. And I tore the paper up and I put it in there and got it going and I put the wood on there. And there it goes, go out. So I tore up more paper, threw it in there, lit it again, go out. But I had got interested in this fire, in this, in this stove. And I, I sat down there on the concrete thing he had made. I was looking in at that fire, well, what should have been a fire, and I just took a deep breath and I just it went blue in it. And when I did, that paper, those little red sparks, the fire went poof, like that. And then, then it was gone, right down again. And I just kept sitting there and I went, and up again. And I just kind of become so engulfed in doing that that I thought, if I sit here blow long enough, maybe that fire would start. And you know, it, it brought to my mind when you said that, that we have, sometimes we get so low <coughs> inside that all we have is those little sparks. Yeah. Wow. And you know, sometimes we've got, we've got to work a little bit and stir in it and get it to go on and show God that we're interested in doing what he's called us to do. Wow. And he will bring on them embers and he will set your soul fire. Wow. And that's what I pray tonight. I pray that God would blow on the embers of my soul um, and that he would consume everything in me that's not of him and that I will go forth and do what he has called me to do and that the fire that it would be in me would be so hot and I would be so on fire with God that whoever I sat down beside of would feel the warmth of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord moving in my life and sing that God is a God that hears and answers prayer. And he is a God that restores. And he is going to restore me. And he's going to raise me up to do his will. And I'm going to walk according to his statutes and not everybody else's. And I'm going to please him and do what he wants me to do. And you know, I just praise God for where he has brought me from. He has picked me up out of the mighty clay yeah. and set my feet upon a solid rock. And you know, I can't go back. I can't bring Justin back. But you know what the word says? Like David said, I can go to him. And you know what? I'm going to go to him. I'm going to him. I'm going to go see him again. You know, I can't sit and walk around. But I tell you what, the Lord is dealing with me and he's rising me up. Amen. And I just want to praise him Amen. and thank him for what he is doing in my life. He's supplying all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Things are coming our way. Every way I turn, I am blessed. Amen. You know, I, I just see everything. It's like he has opened my eyes to see the little things that he is doing in my life. And it's such a blessing to me. And I know that it is of God. Yeah. It is of God. And he has given me favor. Everywhere I go, he has blessed me with favor. And I praise him for that tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My what a wonderful testimony. That touches my heart, Sister Angie, like you just have no idea. Church, we just need to remember Sister Angie and pray that God would just blow on her as she was talking about how she was blown on that fire to just blow on her and blow on her until she's burning so bright that you're going to hear it wherever you're at. My God, he's a, what a wonderful testimony. God, so pleased when we can stand up and say that's what we want. My goodness, anybody else?
that, but if somebody was supposed to come in there and, and uh, he was going to shoot people or whatever, you know, it's just crazy. This is right here in our town. But, uh, you know, we were worried. You know, we tried to call call it. Just stay on, on, stay on, day. You don't have to go. That just stay in. Don't, don't, don't go to the store today. Just stay home. And, uh, you know, she just called us. She said, I'm here. I'm going to FCA. And that's what happens. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for that. I thank God for my, my son in North Carolina, Blake. He's, I thank God that he uh, passed his test. To get out of the police academy has been a real uh, burden for him. He's trying to transition from the military to civilian life and provide for his wife and his son. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity that God blessed him with. Yes. Uh, I can just go on. I've taken all the whole night just standing here praising God and thanking God for things. You know, I don't know how we can sit here and just not praise and not talk to live before church. How in the world can we come here and just sit and not at least raise up an arm and give we all ought to be face down on the floor up there where we should be. Mm -hmm. Just give him praise and glory and honor. But uh, I just like to tell y'all I love the Lord. I love you guys. It blesses me every time I come here. Our band is awesome. You know, we sit here and we hear them Sunday and Wednesday and Sunday and Wednesday. And we we just get used to how great they are, you know. But I'll never forget the first time I heard them play. I was like just amazed at how they brought forth the, the uh, their music, which honors God. You know, we just have a wonderful church, and we're all lucky to we're all blessed to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. Only if you don't know FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes, if she was going to make a stand for God. Apparently, I didn't know anything about it. Brother Jim hadn't heard anything, but my goodness, God is so good, and that's what we need. That's why we need to get hungry and thirsty for God and the fullness of God and all of His power and all of His gifts that He has given us and that Holy Ghost fire. We've got to get so hungry and thirsty for that so that we can not only carry that torch and let it burn brightly, but we have got to show a, a, a ne the next generation what the true God is. Someone has to carry that torch to be able to pass it on to the younger ones so that they can stand up and make the declarations like that. My goodness.
Wyoming County in the Bible Belt. It's hard to believe that that's what's happening in the school. It's crazy. But, you know, I think how many kids up there have not been taught? And those, those teenagers that are taught, you know, what if they have an impact on students? You know, what if, you know, how many people are they going to persuade? Yeah. You know? There will be an impact. I mean, we talked about that Wednesday night service a while back about, we looked up some numbers on different things of, of, of who teenagers go to for advice. Parents weren't even on the list. I mean, you had musicians, singers, other friends, different things. They will be influenced. And that's why it's so important that we get on fire for God and we are that influence. It's, it lies upon us. It's our responsibility. We have to take that torch and we have to pass it on to the next generation. We have to show them who God is, what he is, how much he loves them and what they can have in him because they will be influenced. It's up to the church to influence them or let the world influence them. And we've got to do our job. The church is, but I, I don't need to take up any time. Let's just go and Sister Sonia, you was going to give us a praise report. I wasn't going to give a praise report. I was just going to say I love God with all my heart. And I just want to thank him for, for using me for his glory. For Because it's really nothing about me. And I, I just love him so much. And I'm just excited about God. And I, I'm excited about what the future holds. I, every day I get more excited. And I'm just so full of joy with God, you know. And I just love him so much. And. I just see where God's brought me at this year, from where I was a year ago to where God's brought me now and how my heart hungers for him and, and thirsts for him, you know, and how every day I'm, I, I'm mindful of him. And that's why I pray to God every day is let me be mindful of you or what you want me to say or what you want me to do. And, you know, and I, I thank God for that because it's important. It's important that we are that light. I mean, I work at Wyoming East. I mean, I'm not in the with these kids in the middle of all this mess that's going on. and But I, I, I'm like Carly, I don't have no fear because, you know, I know I serve the most high God, you know, and I, I don't have no fear, and I'll never allow that. I, I've had fear before in the past, and, and God delivered me from it, and I will never, ever allow fear to come upon me again because I serve the God that created me. He created heaven and earth and everything in it, and he created me, and I do not have no fear. And I'm like Carly, if I leave today, I know I'll be in the presence of God before I take the, uh, the last breath out, I'll be with Jesus. And that's all important. It's all important. And I just want to praise him. Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> and my last for example, the research. Go ahead, sister. I've been telling the kids for about a month or uh, so, uh, and to tell you, show you what God can do. Every day I get a call, 01149. That is Germany, country name. So I just assume it's my phone. If I get the phone, I answer it. No one says anything. And I haven't seen him in five years. And uh, one day he said, Lord, you got to take care of this. I can't. And this is aggravating me. It caused me to cry. I said, and I'll do this for Oh, Lord, you just take care of it. Today, someone called me and said they were just looking for a person and they thought he was at home. And they were calling there to get him to answer the call. God answered my prayer and I thank God the Lord. Amen. Because I need that. Yes. Hallelujah. God's a God that answers prayer. And they seem. We may think it's insignificant, but when we get to that point where we're aggravated and we've had enough, we can go to God. And a lot of times, I don't know why it takes us that long to get to that point. If we'll just, if it means something to you, it means something to God. Go to Him and He will answer you. He said that He will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Call upon Him. He's wonderful. What a wonderful God we have. You have peace now, don't you? My goodness, he's a God of peace, the Prince of Peace. Anyone else tonight? Everybody? That sounds good to me. Everybody, let's just stand up and we'll all give God our own praise report. Let's just let him know how thankful we are 
that he is the God most high and that he loves us with a love that's unconditional that no matter where we're at or what kind of state we're in or what kind of mess we're in he still loves us he's still calling us he still has his arms outstretched waiting on us to come to him God you're worthy to be praised tonight we thank you for the testimonies in this house God God we pray for each and every one in this house tonight that you will move upon their hearts and upon their lives and upon their souls and just as your word says Father we just pray for everyone in this house tonight above all things that they prosper be in health even as their soul prospers and God we magnify you tonight you are worthy of all praise God you're worthy let us not be like they were in Bethlehem that night when you come to this earth Lord they had no room God let us not be that way let us have room for you my God let us put the cross first and foremost in our lives and give you the honor and the glory that you are due because you alone are good you have done us nothing but good no one else can give us what you give us you are that well of life tonight and we thank you and we praise you for that tonight in Jesus name hallelujah you may be seated this time we're going to change the order of the service and we're going to let sister Heather come and minister the word to us tonight how thankful are you for the word the begotten by the word all things are upheld by the word of his power his words are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh you know a lot of times we're too lazy to find them and right there all along he's got what we need and he said it's in his word go to his word it's health to your navel and marrow to your bones my goodness come on sister heather hallelujah god is so good Praise the Lord. I enjoyed those testimonies. I would have uh, been fine if everybody just kept on going. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray just one more time. Father God, we just thank you for this night. God, I thank you for the brothers and sisters that are gathered in this house. God, I thank you for your mercy, your goodness, your grace. I thank you for your word, Father. And Father, for the next few minutes, Lord, we just ask that you would speak to us and to our hearts, God, what you would have us to hear tonight, God, that 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 we would hear something, that you would put something in us tonight, God, that help would help us grow in you, God, and mature and go further in you, Father. We pray it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to talk for a few minutes tonight. I've already heard it mentioned more than once tonight about hungering and thirsting for God and for the things of God. And um, that was what was on my mind tonight. I was remembering on the way over here a story that my mom had told me um, more than once, but uh, she was a teenager when she started going to church. Her parents didn't go, and um, her neighbor uh, her neighbors went to church, and they were uh, Sister Stilton, her Holy Ghost filled women, and um, they would she would go with them, and they would go to a, a Pentecostal church, and um, she became hungry for the Holy Spirit. She got saved, and she became very hungry for the Holy Spirit. I think she was about sixteen, and um, she said she was so hungry, and that she would they would go to church, and her um, her dad really didn't um, he didn't believe that way, and. Um, he, he said some things that, you know, kind of hurt her feelings and talked about those tongue-talking people. But she said she was so hungry that she, she, it didn't matter, that she just, you know, kept going back. She said that she would pray so hard and that she would cry when she would be there seeking for the Holy Ghost. And that by the time she would come home, that her hair would be wringing wet and she would be wet with sweat. And she said she was just, she remembers how hungry she was. And that, you know, one night... She received, she was able to open up and receive that precious Holy Spirit. And she said, she had shared this with me some time back, a few years ago. Um, there was something that she was praying for. And she said that she was in prayer and she would say, God, I am so hungry. I'm so hungry for this. I'm so hungry. And she said she heard a voice inside say, you're not hungry enough. And she said he, he brought to her remembrance how she was, had been so hungry at 16 years old for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she said she began to remember how hungry she was. That it didn't matter what her parents thought. That it didn't matter, you know, she would come home and I'm sure they thought, what in the world has she been doing, you know. Uh, but um, it just didn't matter because she was so hungry and 
Sometimes, even myself, I have said I'm hungry. But I had to question myself and say, how hungry am I? Am I really as hungry as I say I am? As I, am I really as hungry as I think I am? Hallelujah. Have you ever been hungry in the natural? Have you ever gone in the physical? You know, you've gone without food for a while and, and you just begin to get very hungry. I remember, it's been several years ago, um, I woke up one morning and God just uh, quickened in my spirit. I was getting ready to go to work and he said, I don't want you to eat or drink today. And, um, so I went to, to work that day and I didn't eat or drink. And um, that mo next morning, very, very early, I got up and, um, and it was just one day. Um, but like I said, I hadn't eaten and I hadn't drinking it, drunk anything. And um, so I got up that next morning and I just felt so weak and I felt so shaky. And, 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 and God said, no, you go ahead and eat. And, and I can remember how good that food tasted and how I just couldn't wait to, to get something to eat and, and get something to drink. And just so hungry, Luana. We've got to get hungry for God. We've got to get hungry for Him to where everything else, they're singing that song tonight, leave it all behind. And we've got to get so hungry for God that we begin to leave it all behind. Amen. Even this week, I have, um, and thank God, He is a forgiven God. And, and, you know, I make mistakes many times. And, and this week, I've gone to Him and said, God, you know, I've messed up. And uh, just some things that, that I've said that I really shouldn't have said. And, and I thank God I've got to get to the point where pride goes away. And, and the need to be right goes away. And, and whether or not, you know, what people think of me or what that all that goes away, but that I am just hungry for you, that I just want to do what you would have me to do and say what you would have me to say and be who you would have me to be. And I know very well that I am not at that point. But I believe he's calling us and he's drawing us, Angie, to a, a deeper place in him. In Matthew 5 and 6, Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The Amplified says, blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. <coughs> Luke 6 and 21, Jesus said, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. <coughs> Psalms 34 and 10 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalm 107 and 9 says, For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Psalms 107, I was reading this just before I came, 35 through 37 says, He turns the wilderness into standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he makes the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. Hallelujah. Pastor was talking about fruitfulness. He was talking about bearing fruit on Sunday and being hungry for the things of God and digging a well and removing those things out of our lives and digging into this earthen vessel. And it says, when it talks about him turning the wilderness into standing water and dry ground into water springs, and it says, there he makes the hungry to dwell. In those places where there are water springs and where there's just water springing up, there the hungry dwell. Amen. And it says that they, they prepare a city for habitation and they plant and they sow that they may reap. Hallelujah. If we're going to become fruitful, we're going to first have to become hungry. We're going to have to be, become hungry for fruit. Why did farmers plant food? In the very beginning, when, 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 when they very beginning first began to farm why did anybody go out into a field and plant food they were hungry they needed something to eat and so they went out and they would begin to plant because they were hungry hallelujah we've got to be hungry for God that we would see the increase of his kingdom not the increase of us but the increase of Christ that when we walk into a place as Angie was talking about that they would sense the presence of God upon us hallelujah not that they would think anything of us but that they would know that there is a presence with us out of another world hallelujah that they would know there's something different I heard a man uh, he's a pastor of a church in Redding, California, Bethel Church. His name is Bill Johnson. Sometimes I listen to him preach or teach. He, he teaches. And um, he was talking about being hungry one day and hungering for God. 
And he said something that um, is not really, I mean, it's not anything that we don't know, but yet sometimes people say simple things, and yet they, they have a profound impact upon us. And, and he said this, he said, In the natural, we get hungry by not eating, but in the spiritual, we become hungry when we eat. Amen? And that is very true. We become hungry when we eat. Because... And those of us who go to church, if you've ever uh, gone to church and then for a period of time you just, let's say you, you start missing some. And, and then it gets easier and easier. And then you just, you just start missing more and more and more to the point where it doesn't bother you anymore and you're not hungry to come anymore. We have to eat in the spiritual to become hungry. When we read our word, we become hungry. When we decide not to read our word and we go days at a time or weeks at a time without eating our word, there's no hunger. The hunger ceases. We have to eat to be hungry. When we pray, we become hungry. But when we go for days on end without praying, the hunger ceases. Amen. We have to hunger for God. And the only way to develop a spiritual hunger is to eat. Amen. And, and I, I can remember... Uh, growing up there was a pastor and he, he would talk about um, he said healthy people are hungry but sick people don't have an appetite those who are healthy want to eat and those who are sick have no appetite they don't want to eat many times they are not hungry and as Christians when we're not hungry we need to begin to examine our spiritual state we need to begin to examine where we are and I'm speaking about myself because we talk about complacency in the church we're just not hungry anymore we're just not you know we, we've got to begin to it's not about what it, if I want to read the word it's not about if I would like to pray it's not about if I would like to fast if I would like to go to church I don't believe there is really an option in those things it, it, if I'm going to be hungry for God then I have to feed upon his word amen I have to feed upon his presence the Bible tells us oh taste and see that the Lord is good if I don't taste him I will not have a taste for him I've got to get it have you ever eaten anything hallelujah have you ever eaten anything and it was so good that you just wanted more of that thing that you ate amen that you just wanted more of it hallelujah and 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 even maybe um sometimes if we're getting ready for uh, we're just getting ready for we just came out of thanksgiving and we're getting ready for christmas and sometimes there are certain things that we only have at those christmas and thanksgiving dinners and we get hungry for those things just thinking about the taste of those things and we're excited to eat those things amen they're special to us and that's the way it is with the Word of God. We've got to get such a taste for Him. We've got to get such a taste for God that we truly desire Him. That when we think about His taste, and when we think about His fragrance, when we think about that, that presence and, and, and what it means in our lives, that we just get hungry for more of Him, Pastor. Hallelujah. I can remember uh, in my early 20s or uh, mid-20s, uh, we would come to church and there were several uh, young women um, in their teens and in their 20s and we would come and we would not have um, preaching which we need preaching don't take that wrong we need the word we would not have preaching we would not have singing but as young women we would put some music on and we would go and we would lay on the floor of the church sister Luana and we would begin to pray hallelujah and we would begin to pray and I saw one young woman who had been baptized in the Holy Spirit but yet she was so timid and through those prayer meetings she just began to open up and God just began to use her and that gift began to flow and we would lay on the floor and we would weep and we would cry and we would pray in another language and we would prophesy and we would interpret hallelujah and I remember those days and we were excited to get to that place just to lay on the floor and be in his presence hallelujah and there is something that we have lost because if there, if, as church now we want to be entertained or we think that we are spectators and that we're supposed to come and just sit in the pew and somebody has to sing and somebody has to preach and if somebody doesn't get up and say something or somebody doesn't get up and sing we don't know what to do but my heart longs Luana for the day that we come in and we lay down on the floor hallelujah just like brother Jim was talking about when we lay our faces on the floor and we just weep for him I've been saying you know uh, pastor was talking about the spiritual gifts and Paul says that we are to to 
covet earnestly the best gifts, hallelujah, that we are desire, to desire those gifts. And God wants those gifts to operate in his house. And, and, those are, and that is something that God has been dealing with me about and some things that I've just been seeking God for. But as I've been seeking him for those things, he's begun to stir something on the inside of me. And I said, God, I want a hunger just for you. I don't want a hunger even for a gift, but I want a hunger for you. Because if I get you, then I get the gift. If I get you, then I get the anointing. If I get you, then I get the power. If I get you, then I get whatever it is that I need. Hallelujah. And I said, God, make me hungry for you. Make me desire just to know you. Hallelujah. Because I've been saying, Lord, you know, we say we know God. I said, God, I really don't know you. I may know you to a certain extent, but I don't know you the way I want to know you because I know there is more of you that I have not tapped into and I know there's more of you that I have not experienced and for that reason I want to know you hallelujah I don't need to know everything else but if I could just know you hallelujah I heard, I heard a man it's been probably back in the summer I, I'm not for sure or it might have been in September when we were on our way back from home from the beach but uh, the radio was on and a um, I can't remember his name. He, he's from India. Um, but um, he was teaching, and, and he's in his um, 60s, I think he said, or 60s, 70s, I don't remember. And he was talking about how that he was asking God, you know, God, what he said, it, it was like every decade or so, God would just speak to him and tell him what this next season of his life was about. And he said, you know, I went to him and I said, God, what... What, what, what word do you have for me for this season of my life? And he said, I, 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 he said God took me in my mind. He said, I, I, he had a vision. He said, I was on a beach. And he said, and, and I looked and he said, God said, what do you see? And he said, Lord, the sun is setting. And he said, he spoke to him and said, son, the sun is setting. Get to know me. Now, this man works in the ministry. Um, he feeds... Um, I can't remember exactly what, what ministry it is, but he works with, they feed uh, all these, you know, many hungry people in different countries. They do lots of work in other countries. And um, being from India, he's from a very poor country himself. He knows all about poverty. And, um, but, but, it, but he said, you know, he said, the sun is setting. This is, this is, this is probably going to be the last season in your life. The sun is setting. And he said, he didn't say, go pray for somebody. He didn't say, go feed more hungry people. Not that those are not uh, good things. He said, get to know me. Because that is the most important thing. Because when we get to know him, then out of that will flow the things that we need to do. See, so many times we struggle. I know I struggle with it myself. We struggle to do the right thing. To make ourselves do the right thing. Or to, you know, whatever it is. But, but somewhere there has to be a place to want where we know him so well and he means so much to us that the desire in our heart is to do the right thing in every situation. That we desire to please him more than we desire to please ourselves or anybody else. That we desire to please him even when it's not comfortable for us. That we desire to please him even when it makes things hard for us. That we desire to please him. When I first started thinking about this, it was... Um, a few weeks ago, about a month ago, and um, I was praying one night, and, and, and I just heard the, the verse from Colossians. I, I heard God saying, set your affection on things above. Set your affection on things above. And, and, I, and I was just reading in, in the Word and, and studying, and, and that um, the word there that's, that, that's translated, set your affections, it's a Greek word uh, for neo, and it talks about setting your mind on something. Um, it talks about to take a side with someone, uh, to have their same views. And he said, set your affection on things above. And, and I was looking at that word, and I was looking at other places where it's used in the Bible. And, and it's used in Mark 8. And it's translated a, a little differently there. It's not translated as set your affection. Um, but in Mark 8... Jesus was talking to the disciples, and in verse 31, it says that he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief, chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And it says he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
The same story in Matthew 16 and 22, um, Peter said, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. And it says in verse 33 of Mark 8, that when Jesus had turned around and looked on his disciples, it says he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. And it's the same word, savorest, it's the same word, phreneo, there, that's translated as set your affection, back in Colossians. And I begin to think about savoring something, how you savor it, how you, you taste it, and how you smell it, and you savor it, Amen. And, and Jesus said, you, you don't savor the things of God. You're, 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 you're on the side of man. In fact, the Amplified says, you're not on God's side. You're on the side of man. And so he, he said, you're not savoring the things of, of God, Peter. You, 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 you don't have a taste for the things of God. Not right now. You don't, you don't really have a taste for the things of God. Amen. And I began to think about, how, hey, is there anything that you've ever, any kind of food, that you've ever not liked. And for one reason or another, you began to eat it. And after you ate it for a while, you acquired a taste for it, and you began to really like it. Now I can tell you something that I acquired a taste for, and it's not healthy. <laughs> and, uh, and since then, I've given it up. But at one point, uh, or pretty much so, I hardly ever uh, drink any of it, but, see, but at one point I decided I was gonna lose some weight. I wanted to lose some weight. So I was going to start drinking Diet Pop. It's terrible for you. Everything says it kills you. It gives you cancer and everything else. But anyway, I said, I'm going to start. Well, I hate, I hate aspartame. I cannot stand that taste. But I said, well, I'm going to drink this Diet Pop because it'll, it, it'll help me lose some weight. I won't drink the, the, the regular. I'll drink the Diet. And I couldn't stand it, Larry. But I started drinking it. And I started drinking it all the time. <laughs> and, and before long, I wanted it. And I liked it better than the red. In fact, I didn't even want the regular. I wanted the diet. The, it was Diet Pepsi. Yeah. And, and I acquired a taste for it. I didn't like it. I mean, at one time I hated it, but I acquired a taste for it. And I read an article that a pastor wrote for a, uh, it's a Christian magazine. And he said this, and he said he and his wife were going to start exercising. They were going to start running. And he said his wife said, I don't like to run, but I like the idea of liking to run. <laughs> and he said, how could she, he asked this question, how could she turn that idea into the reality of liking to run? And he said, this is what she had to do, get out and do it. He said, do it as a discipline until it becomes a joy. And this is pretty hard, but it, it really is true. When, 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 I know it hit me when I examine myself. He said, some of us need to admit the same thing about God and his presence. I don't like the presence of God. Now, I know that sounds terrible. I don't like the presence of God. If I did, I'd spend more time cultivating it. Acknowledging him and seeking his presence. But I like the idea of liking the presence of God. So I'd better make a start right now. He said heaven is an acquired taste and we've got to get ready for it now. I think that's why, you know, talking about repetition and eating something until you desire, develop a taste for it. In God's word, there are many... Um, Verses that talk about repetition. He talks about pray without ceasing. He talks about keeping your mind stayed on him. He, um, in Joshua 1 and 8, it talks about, uh, it says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, observing to do according to all that is written therein. He says, give thanks always for all things and to God in Ephesians 5. Even about gathering ourselves together, he tells us not to forsake the gathering together of ourselves. He says, but all the more so as you see the day approaching. I believe God knew that we would have to acquire a taste for some things. A taste for some things not of this world. A taste for heavenly things. 
And God well knew, because he designed us, that the more we do something, that the more we develop a liking for it. And so he said, pray without ceasing. And if we would begin to pray on a regular basis, even when we don't feel like it, we begin to, we begin to acquire a taste for prayer. We begin to read our word, even when we don't feel like it. We'll begin to acquire a taste for the word of God. If we come to church, even when we don't feel like it, we'll acquire a taste for coming to church and worshiping God. Amen? Amen. If we spend time in his presence, even when we don't feel like it, we'll acquire a taste for the presence of God. Sometimes I pray, God, give me a hunger. But I have a part to play in that. There's nothing wrong with praying that. But if I want to say, God, give me a hunger, then I've got to pick up my Bible. I've got to go to church to hear the word. I've got to go into my prayer closet and spend some time with him. I've got to worship him because that is the way we acquire a taste for the things that are not of this world. Amen. That is the way we set our affection on things above and not on this earth. Amen. The pastor has said, whatever you want to die, starve it. Whatever you want to live, feed it. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. We have to starve the flesh and feed the spirit. a man named William Beecham who wrote a book called Spiritual Christianity. He said, mature Christians taste Christianity. Learning to want Christian living is an acquired taste. And a candidate for heaven deliberately must develop a desire for the Christian life. A mature Christian must have a certain hunger for a spiritual life to follow the path. There's a man named John Ruskin. Now, I don't entirely agree with what he says, but it does make some sense. He was um, an art critic in the 1800s. And he talked about taste. Now we're talking about taste and things. He was talking about taste in art, taste in music, taste in... He said, taste is the only morality. Tell me what you like, and I'll tell you what you are. And that is so... In the life of the Christian. Tell me what you like. And I'll tell you what you are. If I tell you I like all kinds of things. That have nothing to do with God. There's something missing somewhere. I need to like prayer. And I need to like spending time with God. And I need to like his word. I need to love his word. And love spending time with God. And if I don't like it. If it's, and it's going to be uncomfortable for my flesh, and it is. I need to do it until I like it. I need to do it until I love it. I need to do it until it makes a difference in me. Amen. We've got to acquire a taste for the heavenly. Because if we acquire a taste for the heavenly, if we become hungry, if we eat and we cultivate that hunger and we become hungry, for him, he says he will fill those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. We read that he said he would put the hungry in that place where he causes the wells to spring up. He would put them there and let them prepare a city for habitation. To plant, to sow, that they would reap. Amen? Amen. I'm not hungry enough. I know I'm not. And sometimes we're not hungry enough because we feed ourselves junk. In the natural, you, you ever ruin your dinner? You may have a really good dinner coming up, but maybe you eat a bunch of junk. And when you get ready to eat dinner, you're not even, you're not even hungry anymore. Sometimes we feed ourselves on junk. We spend too much time watching TV. We spend, just like the pastors talked about, we spend too much time watching TV, too much time on the Internet, too much time whatever. Nothing wrong with doing certain things, but when, it, when, when we're not spending time with God and we're doing those things, we gotta, we got to figure out what we're going to lay down. Amen? I love that. Tell me what you like, and I'll tell you what you are. We have to eat to become hungry. 
I know that's not a profound word tonight, but I desire a greater hunger for him, Pastor. And so I want to eat. I want to eat more of him that that hunger would develop inside of me, that I would acquire a taste for that which he would want me to eat. Amen. <coughs> Just give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you may say that's not a profound word, but I think that word is the key. You know, growing up playing ball, and I know I've heard the pastor stories about how talented he was on the ball court and fast and how good the team was that he got to play on. And I know that he's heard this, and any of you that's been in sports have heard this from your coach. When it comes down to the end of the game, and it's close, and he calls a timeout, and he brings you over, and he says, it's not who's best, but it's who wants it the most. What a true word, an profound word that was tonight. I think that's the key. You know, we all... We all talk before church, after church, about how we want to see these things happen, how we want to see the church in the book of Acts alive and well in this church and in, in our life and everything. But do we really want it? I've heard the pastor say many, many times, are you desperate enough? Are you hungry? I'm guilty. I know I am. I mean, God has told me for years. And I'll go home and sit down on the couch and turn on the TV and I'll eat and eat until I fall asleep. And the whole time, God is saying, I've got it for you, but you've got to want it. You've got to be hungry enough to seek me, to put everything else to the side. You know, so many other things, Pastor, consume my thought life. I'm all, you, you know, it, it, I don't know if you guys are like I am. I'm constantly thinking about something. And 99.9% .9 of it is a waste of my time. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. If I would set my affection on things above, on Him and on His Word, and spend time getting to know Him and developing a hunger for the heavenlies and for Him, He'll do it. He'll, he says, those who hunger and thirst, and pastor preached a message that we have to see ourselves poor and needy and thirsty, desiring that water. If we don't get to that point and we just go on through this life, you know, with the ups and downs, we're never going to see the fullness of God and what he desires for our lives, Brother Gary. We've not even scratched the surface. We, we have good services. The Spirit moves. We haven't even scratched the surface or begin to see the awesome power of the mighty God and what he wants to do. Amen. We've not even seen it. I've not seen this building shake. The church in the book of Acts seen it shake. When they prayed, things happened. But they were hungry. That's all they knew. That's all they wanted. And until we get to that point, I don't think we'll see the vision that we have come to pass. The desire and the plans and the heart of God and what He wants for us, we're not going to see it unless we get hungry. And again, I'm talking to myself. What do we do, Pastor? God wants it. The price has been paid. The Holy Ghost is available. The Word is there. How many times do I grieve the Holy Spirit? And it's a great thing. You know, Pastor, I, when I first started reading and studying on the Spirit and, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and how it links up with the Spirit of man, my spirit on the inside, and, and the Word tells us that the Holy Spirit knows all things, I was so excited, you know, and, and I thought, well, and at different occasions, something, I lost my wedding band. You know, hadn't been married very long at all. And, and I had great pride and joy in, in the gift that God gave me. I was 33 years old before I got married and been praying for a wife. And God gave me such a special gift. And 
I was excited to go get a ring and, and I lost my ring and I got so scared. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I mean, and I wasn't really worried about the cost or, or what she would say or anybody else. It, that was mine. I mean, God give me that gift. So I'm looking and I've been, and I don't mean to take up a lot of time. I had been everywhere that day. I thought, God, this will be impossible. I'd been clean, I'd been on the job, worked a double shift. I cleaned my truck. I'd been to the car wash in town and back up and to the truck wash on the job in a gravel parking lot, over to another office where I used the vacuum cleaner. I mean, I had been everywhere, Gary. And I done looked and looked and looked, and I called and told Heather, and I said, I've lost my ring. I said, pray for me. And she called her mom, and they prayed for me. And I'm sitting there, and it's dark, and I'm sitting there in that gravel parking lot, and I'm thinking, there's no way I'll find this. And then the word was quickened in my spirit. And, it, and the word came to me about how the Holy Ghost knows all things. And I thought, that's right. And I just said, Holy Ghost, show me where my ring is at. And I'm telling you, I got up out of that truck and I didn't take three steps. And in a gravel parking lot and a, and a, a platinum ring, you know, the same color, and it dark, my eyes went right to that ring. And those are just things that really have no meaning. How much more is God willing to bestow upon us if we'll just be hungry enough to take Him at His word and seek after Him and read and pray and humble ourselves before Him and cry out, Sanctify me, O God. Renew in me a right spirit. Wash me and cleanse me and let me be used by You. My God, I think He'll pour out heaven upon us. And, and again, it's not about us. When we humble ourselves, humility, God said He requires justice and humility and a good heart. But humility is, is, is humbling ourselves and knowing that we are nothing without Him. He's the one that chose to use us as the body. We need to put everything behind us, leave it all behind and say, God, we're here do what you need to do in us. Help me develop a hunger for you so I can go forth and be the army that you've called me to be so that we can see the manifestation of your goodness upon this earth. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for those who love him. Many people will tell you that's in heaven, but it's not because if you'll read on it, he says it is revealed to us by his spirit. We'll have no need of it when we cross over to the other side. We are going to be like Him. That tells me that that's in this life right now. If it's revealed by His Spirit, the good things that He has for us, and we've not even touched them. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is a wonderful, wonderful God. And we have not even seen but a glimmer of what He wants for us. Just like His servant said, God, I want to see Your glory. And He hid Him in the cleft of the rock and the glory went by. My goodness, but we under that new covenant can see Him. We can see that glory. We can walk in that glory. We can walk in the power and authority and the dominion of the glory of God that He has given us through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. If anybody needs prayer tonight, just come on down. We'll pray for you. Just, just wait for a moment. If you need anything tonight, we've got elders here, everybody, you know, the church will pray for you if you have anything at all that you need tonight. Hallelujah. If not, we're going to go ahead and dismiss with a word of prayer if all hearts and minds are clear. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, that he came to this earth to be our Savior, our Redeemer, to deliver us from the hand of the enemy, and he was our example. God, let us be like Christ on this earth so that we can be the example for others to see, so that we can influence a younger generation, that they would be on fire for you. God, we just thank you and praise you for everything that you've done in this house tonight, and we thank you for the cross that you were willing to go and die and shed your blood for our forgiveness so that we could be like you. Father, you came and took upon yourself flesh. You came to be like us so that we could be like you. Father, help us. And Father, just speak to our 
hearts tonight, Lord. Let us develop a hunger and a thirst for you because if we do that, Lord, we're going to have everything that we need and you're going to be glorified, God. God, we went everywhere. Every time anything comes up in our life, we went to, to this place or to that place or to that person and here and there. And God, we've not got any better for it. But when we put everything else to the side and we get hungry and desperate and go to you, you're going to answer. You're going to be there and you're going to be our rock. You're going to be our shield and our buckler and our exceeding great reward. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to get hungry for you. I believe that you are... I believe that you are desperate tonight to pour out your goodness on this earth, that your heart's crying, that your burden for lost souls to come into the kingdom. I believe you're desperate that we would get desperate for you so that we could bring in that harvest in these last days. Father, we just thank you and praise you again for your word tonight, God. Be with us as we go, Lord, throughout the rest of this week, God. God, I pray for uh, the upcoming prep play this weekend, God, that you would just minister to lost people that may come into this house to see the Christmas play. And God, I just praise you for your goodness and your grace. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless everyone in this building by the power and authority of Christ. I speak blessings over their life, God. I pray that you would go with them throughout the rest of this week, that you would cause increase and in favor to come their way, that you would bring health and healing their way, that you would bring the fullness of salvation to them and to their homes and everywhere that they go. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and honor and the glory for it. And again, thank you for your word. And may we uplift you in all that we do for you alone are worthy and we pray all of these things in the name of your son Jesus. Amen.